I'm Josh Stein, I'm the current state senator in Senate District 16. I'm running for re-election. I believe that we need to present, prepare North Carolina to have the best opportunity for long-term success. And that means having a strong public school system, a strong university system, and a strong economy. I'm gravely concerned with the policy developments of the last four years that the Republican legislature have made. I think they made the wrong choices for North Carolina. I think slashing cuts, uh, taxes for very wealthy people and large corporations instead of investing in education was the wrong choice. Uh, I think rejecting $51 billion of our own Medicaid money that we send to the federal government that would go to pay for health care for hundreds of thousands of people, making them healthier, saving lives, strengthening hospitals, creating thousands, tens of thousands of jobs, all at no net cost to the state general fund uh, is a fundamentally wrong choice for North Carolina. And so I'm running for re-election because I want North Carolina to make the right choices for our people, for our middle class families, our kids, our future, and that's what I hope to achieve. We absolutely have to stop. The choice, here's the fundamental choice this legislature made in the past session. They said they would rather than invest in our school kids, our teachers, and our future, give tax giveaways to the well-to-do and well-connected. This year alone, $800 million was spent in tax giveaways to large corporations and extremely wealthy people. And when you analyze who got the money, about a half a billion dollars, $500 million, went to people whose average annual income is $1 million. There's just a few thousand North Carolinians who earn that type of money, and yet they're the ones getting about a half a billion dollars, which, incidentally, is the same amount they cut public education this year. Fundamentally the wrong choice for North Carolina. I'm running for re-election to try to get North Carolina making the right choices for our future. I support the existing film incentive program. It's worked. We went from a state that had no film program at all to a very strong film sector, particularly down in Wilmington, but also here in Raleigh and in Charlotte. There are 4,000 film-related jobs in North Carolina. And here's the deal with the film incentive is you don't pay it unless the money is spent and you only give a fraction of what is spent in North Carolina. If nothing is spent, you don't give any incentive. You only give it if more money is spent here. By ending this tax incentive program and going to their grant program, they're essentially sacrificing the film industry in North Carolina and we don't have the luxury of sacrificing any industry. Just today, three television shows announced that they're gonna be leaving Wilmington at the end of this season. I had my 30th high school reunion a couple weeks ago in Chapel Hill, and one of my buddies is a um, prop guy, and he said, I grew up in North Carolina, I love North Carolina, I'm gonna to have to move to Atlanta now. And he was exceedingly upset, as we all should be. North Carolina should try to promote policies for energy independence. And far and away, the best bang for the buck is renewable energy. We have a renewable energy tax credit. We have a program called the Renewable Energy Portfolio Standard. These were solid state policies that have resulted in North Carolina being one of the leading champions of solar development in the entire country. I think we're number two in the country in new solar installations this year. And it creates thousands of jobs. All this focus on fracking is just completely missing the ball. Even under their scenarios, at full force, it's only a couple hundred jobs. And the risk to our water source, because it's in Chatham County, which is right in the Triangle area, uh, it's just too great a risk for too small a return. This General Assembly is getting North Carolina completely off track. They're engaged in a race to the bottom philosophy of governance. They think that if we have the lowest taxes in the country, the least regulation, uh, that somehow that will, the flowers will bloom. And that's not how it works. The way North Carolina has transitioned, 50 years ago we were the second poorest state in the country. Second poorest. We are dependent on tobacco, textiles, and furniture making. Today we are one of the fastest growing states by population. We have an incredibly diverse economy with textiles with 
information technology, biotechnology, finance, agriculture, tourism, film, all these sectors, many of which didn't exist 50 years ago. That transformation didn't just happen. It was the result of intentional leadership and a forward-looking pro-economic development approach to government that emphasizes investing in our people through education, in infrastructure, and in innovation. And these guys running the state legislature today have completely missed the history lessons of what to take. North Carolina was not perfect when they took over. We were, the whole country was in a terrible recession. We constantly have to be innovating and coming up with new ideas. But to engage in a race to the bottom as they are uh, and pursue a very extreme social agenda uh, when we need to focus on the fundamentals of government, I think is wrong. A priority would definitely be improving K-12. We need to have a teacher professionalism and pay program. Pay is a great deal of the, of the problem. They're not paid enough. They dropped us to 46. They came up with this teacher compensation plan in the election year this year. But it, it's a one-time deal. There's no commitment to a sustained effort to get North Carolina the national average. But it, it's so much more than pay. It's about giving them the tools they need to succeed uh, to have teaching fellows where we get the best and brightest of college and high school into our classrooms. It's having mentoring programs. It's having teacher assistants in the classroom so that the teacher can focus on educating and the assistant can help out. They fired thousands of teacher assistants in this budget. Um, I want to make sure that we have the best K-12 education we can possibly have. Transportation is a real problem because the way funding is today is mainly through the gas tax. And a positive <laughs> of having more fuel efficient vehicles is that we're not paying as much to fill up the tank as we used to. That's a great thing for consumers, but it means that the state has less revenue to pay for the roads. So we have to be innovative in the way we deal with transportation funding. I supported the effort to uh, revisit the way transportation financing is done. Before it has been too political in North Carolina, we need to make sure transportation funding is done according to uh, data, where, the, where is the need the greatest. Um, so I supported that bill, but I was I'm very disturbed. I'm open to the idea of bond funding, which the governor has promoted, but he's cherry picking political projects that are not ranked high in terms of societal need. So within a month, six months of his legislative victory, he's immediately going back to the old way of dealing with it, which is political payoffs. And I think that's the wrong way to do um, transportation funding. We need to consider ways to get it vehicle mile drive so that electric cars are levied. Uh, right now, if you don't have an electric car, you never buy gas, and yet your tires create wear and tear on the road too. So it needs innovative um, solutions, and I'm open to all ideas. The death penalty has a role. There are certain crimes that are so heinous that that is the appropriate punishment. The death penalty is also the most serious sanction we can levy. So it has to be done in such a way to ensure that we never execute an innocent person, that uh, things like race don't play a matter. That's why I supported the Racial Justice Act, because we need to make sure that if anyone's on death row, that race didn't play a factor in their sentencing. Um, so yes, there are crimes that merit the death penalty, but we also have to make sure we have a process, a, a criminal justice system that uh, only executes those who deserve it. You know, North Carolina and Texas are the only states in the top 10 population that don't have a full-time legislature. And normally one would say, oh my God, the legislature's a mess and we don't need more of that. And that's a, a viewpoint that I sympathize with. But let me tell you this, you look at the legislature and it's old, older than the general population, it's whiter, and it's maler. And there's a reason for that, because it tends to have a lot of retirees, a lot of wealthy people, there are some spouses of people who are wealthy, and then there are some professionals. You know, I'm a lawyer, so I'm able to do my job and do this. But what happens is that middle class folks can't serve in the legislature. There aren't enough people with a real perspective. 
And um, I think that the quality of policymaking would improve if we had more regular working folks serving in the legislature. Well, I am blessed to be married to Anna. I've been married, we've been married 18 years, and I'm sure I got that number right. And we have three kids, Sam, who is at Broughton, Adam, who is at Ligon, and Leah, who is in elementary school at Wiley, and uh, they, are, they are delights. Typical Saturday morning involves my, my children, my delights. So in the fall, this fall, Leah has been playing lacrosse, so I take her over to Kiwanis Park and um, drive her there. In the winters, I tend to coach basketball games at the YMCA. I've been coaching for probably eight, eight years, six, eight years, something like that. And, um, but I stop when they get to middle school. When, once they become middle schooler, they become too difficult for me to deal with. I, I coached the boys one year, on, they're on the same team, and they didn't like it. So I, I'm gonna be coaching Leah this winter, Saturdays at the YMCA. I basically, everywhere I am, I come into contact with really remarkable people. So whatever I'm doing, I try to find people who are doing it in a way that I really respect. And whether it's a legislature, I look to someone like Dan Blue or formerly Joe Hackney, people who have been doing it for a long time and doing it in a really respectable um, manner. So I, I try to emulate them. I, I worked at the Attorney General's office for eight years for Roy Cooper. I was his Deputy Attorney General for Consumer Protection. So I got to work very closely with him on a number of important policy initiatives. And we had a lot of intense negotiations, whether they were on litigation or in, on legislation. And I got to see his timber, his steel, and uh, I learned a lot from him. Um, so it doesn't matter what forum I'm in, there's always gonna be somebody there doing it in a really good way. And I try to observe and learn and, and improve. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Democrat and have been my whole life. I believe that people should have the opportunity to achieve whatever it is they possibly can, whatever their dreams are, whatever their talents can take them. And that means having pre-kindergarten programs so that every child starts school healthy and ready to learn. It means having the best public school system that you can possibly have by having highly professional and well-paid teachers in the classroom so that all students learn what they need to learn so that a kid who may come from a family that has never had anyone go to college, if they have that talent and that drive within them, they should be able to go to college, which means that when they get ready to go to college, they need to be able to afford it. So our universities have to be affordable and remain the top high caliber that they are. Uh, and then they make whatever they make for their lives, and that's a beautiful thing. I think that those types of commitments to opportunity um, that we are all in it together and that we're trying to create a system whereby people can succeed uh, really fits the core of the Democratic Party and that's why I'm a Democrat.